Welcome everyone to the ninth game of the World Championship match 2023. Nepo is leading the match with a score of four and a half to three and a half, and this is the ninth game. In this, Yan has the white pieces, and let's begin. So, firstly, uh, everyone was wondering what will Yan open the game with. He stuck to one e4, and Ding responded back with e5. He didn't go for the French defense this time. Okay, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, knight f6, we have the Berlin, d3, the anti-Berlin, bishop c5, c3. Anti-Berlins can basically be classified into positions where white takes on c6 and positions where white does not. And here white did not take on c6 and pushed his pawns to d3 and c3. Castles, castles. This gives a lot of feel like the Italian. Uh, let's imagine that the bishop was back on c4. We would have a normal Italian game. But with the bishop here on b5, it has some different ideas. There's always pressure here on c6. For example, let's say d5 was played. And you cannot really go here, take, take and play knight e5 because then d4 happens so although the bishop is on b5 and putting pressure on c6 it does not help much in putting pressure on the e5 point okay d5 knight went to d2 d e d e a5 was played here now the main point of a5 is to uh, stop this sort of expansion with um, b4 in the position Let's say, for example, if I if I began with queen e7, then b4 is a very much possible move. So a5 first stops that, and then after a4, you go queen e7, and now queen c2 was played. There's also possibility of queen e2, but as Vishy Anand mentioned, putting the queen on c2 means that later on, the bishop can use that square on e2, or even you can go rook e1, and the bishop could come back to f1. Knight went back to b8. There was one game of Nakamura where he go, goes knight a7 against uh, Rajabov. This was at the candidates uh, that happened. And then Rajabov goes knight b3. And uh, I think, no, it was first uh, bishop e2. Yeah, bishop e2, knight c6 back. And then knight b3 and white went on to win this very nice game. It was a, it was a great win for, for Temur. But uh, here knight b8 was played. And the point is very clear. The knight on c6 is dominated by the pawn on c3. So you reroute it. You may want to go to a6. You may want to go to d7. You want to improve the position of the knight. Rook e1. Rook d8. And now h3 was played. Just a simple move h6 also nice little move knight f1 c6 and bishop went back to c4 now the bishop is well positioned here uh knight a6 was played by ding knight g3 and queen c7 so now the entire idea of this re so the reshuffling is that you put your bishop on f8 and then the knight sits on c5, which is a very good square. But after bishop a2, suddenly Ding, instead of going bishop f8 and knight c5, which, are, which would have been a great way to play, he went b5. And uh, this was start of something very interesting because queen e2 put pressure here. And now Ding should have gone bishop f8 because yes, you can win a pawn here. Queen takes b5. But then after knight c5, black has great compensation knight is coming to d3 bishop is coming to a6 and so on but the moment he went rook b8 he was already calling trouble here white to play now your first question what should white play in this position right so if you found the move knight h4 brilliant job your idea now is to get the knight to f5 queen to f3 bishop here bishop here launch a powerful attack it's very dangerous all of a sudden you are not in time for this i was also wondering if let's say we started off with bishop f8 knight h4 is this position uh scary now but turns out that 
you don't have that much time because king h7 and everything is pretty safe here so let's go back to the game and see how it progressed rook b8 knight h4 bishop f8 queen f3 and now in this very position if you were to play king h7 then already you are way too slow you are not creating your own counterplay like say ng f5 and you can't go knight c5 because already knight h6 is hanging so you are basically one tempo behind but with knight on c5 you in the previous line it was an important tempo than rook b8 b takes a4 was played by ding and he was very brave now he started playing great chess but nepo was like bishop at six ding i have taken your important pawn so now it's black to move what do you play here it's a very important move to save yourself the right move here and the only move is knight c5 fantastic move you are actually looking at an important square on d3 to put your rook imagine that you were careless and you played rook takes b2 then the move that would actually finish off the game your white to play guys what would you do yes the move is bishop to g5 just a backward move the pin here becomes dangerous if the knight was here on c5 you could have broken the pin with rook d3 but now it's not possible and after bishop e7 knight f5 takes there is already too much of pressure white is winning here so that's the reason why knight c5 was very strong by ding knight g6 was played and now if you play bishop g5 there is enough time for rook d3 uh if queen e2 there is knight h7 and if uh I mean, queen e2 was the best. If rook e3, knight at 7 is a very, very classy move. Because, uh, I mean, that's very strong. Because after take, take, queen e2, knight d3, queen d3, rook b2, black is doing very well. Um, so, bishop g5 does not work. Knight g6 was played by Nepo using this pin here and says, give me this bishop. Okay. Uh, Ding says fine take it uh, I am ready to win a pawn Rook d3 was possible but here would be met with rook e3 So rook b2 was played Now Nepo went back and took knight takes f8 Rook takes f8 was played Here there was a very interesting line that we uh, that Amruta showed me Which was knight d3 Getting the knight here Rook d1 And now knight uh, if rook f2, there is queen e3. White is better. d3 is hanging. But you start with bishop g4. An epic move. Because after takes, now rook f2. If queen e3, then there is a class move here. Very nice move. Black to play. What do you do? Yes, the, the point of this entire thing is this rook a2 move. Because after takes, now knight g5. Knight g4, queen g5, check, king f1, that is knight h2, mate, here, so king h1, and then check, takes, check, rook here, takes, takes, knight h6, and the position is around, is, is equal here, that's the beauty of this entire line, very forcing line, but works. So, in the game, rook takes f8 was played. This knight d3 business is more computer-like. And here he should have, I think Nepo should have gone bishop c4. And he would have kept an edge here. But he went bishop g5, which allowed black to gain a tempo with knight h7, which was to Ding's advantage. Bishop c1. And now the rook went back to b5. I think rook c2 was stronger to put the rook here. And then if bishop b1, there is rook c1, rook c1, knight b3. And if you were to play bishop a3, then there is knight b3 in the position, takes, takes, with great compensation here. In fact, black is better here. So rook b5 was not the most accurate. Bishop a3, rook e8, and now bishop c4. It's your move. What should black play? It seems like black is in trouble if the rook moves, the knight hangs. What did ding do? So ding put his bishop on e6 and said, take my rook. If you want to take, take it. And then I have my bishop coming here, knight can come here, and this clump of queenside pawns, and he was fine with it. So bishop e6 was great. Actually, taking here would have been nice, because then 
after this position white is the one calling the shots here but he played bishop e6 knight e6 and knight f5 and as it turns out now black is fine with c5 stopping bishop d6 ideas so c5 queen e2 goes rook p3 queen c4 queen c6 and now come mass exchanges after bishop c1 knight f6 takes 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 and actually i mean uh, the game peters out into an equal end game although black is a pawn down it's not at all easy for white to convert this um nepo does try for quite some time by the way knight f5 is a nice move because this end game is easy to draw you have double pawns here that's fine no problem you can draw it so knight g4 the players kept moving and then came the knight end game ding was very accurate gave back one pawn and then nepo could not make any progress further yes it was exciting by the way and nepo tried his best to to put pressure but it didn't turn out into anything concrete and with this draw Ding has sort of stabilized the bleeding with the black pieces. He lost two games in a row now. The score is 5-4 uh, going into the 10th game where Ding will have the white pieces. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. For now, this is Sagar Shah signing off. Bye-bye.